All right, we'll be talking to you later. You go on over there and get your soda pop. Kind of a dreary, drizzly day. Not raining hard, just enough to get somebody wet if you're out there amongst them. Today is a quite similar day to a day that I was thinking about earlier. And this weather, I guess, is what made me think of it. So I guess I'll tell you this little story. Often, I worked in an outline point by myself, and I often had to go check on storage cars. Storage cars are cars that the railroad's not using, so they park them in some abandoned line somewhere and just leave them there until they need them. Uh, this, this was the case at Raymond, Georgia. Raymond's a little line between, it's, it's between Noonan and Sonoy. They have an old coal silo, a huge old coal silo there in a little train yard. They don't them. It must have been pretty active at one time or other, but I don't think they hardly use it at all now. Anyway, it was full of storage cars. And every six months or something, I had to go down there and check them cars out. It wasn't uncommon to go down there and run up on snakes and wild dogs. I mean, it was a pretty remote area back in there. One day I drove down in there to check my storage cars. I had a list of all the car numbers that, that were in there. You take the clipboard with you, walk down there checking them cars. And uh, I heard some commotion over in the woods. The nearest houses were like all 200 yards away through a pretty heavy forest, heavier than what I'm looking at over there in my neighbor's property. But you could see some houses off over there in the distance. But right there beside the track, I heard this hacking noise. And when I come around the car, I come up on a little boy. No adult, nobody with him. He must have been... I'm going to say he might have been five if he was lucky enough to be that old. Out there in them woods all by himself. And he had a hatchet with him. A pretty good sized hatchet. It had a handle in it. 14, 15 inches long. He's squatting down on this dirt pile. Chopping with that hatchet right between his feet. I, mean, he, I thought he's going to cut his foot off. He was chopping like crazy. I don't know what he thought he was chopping. Well, what do you do when you encounter a strange boy in the woods with a hatchet about to hurt himself? Well, if you're responsible, you don't. At least I considered what I did was responsible. I said, boy, what are you doing with that hatchet? Well, he'd give me some little story. I couldn't hardly understand him. Where do you live? He pointed back over towards the houses that I could see over there. Where's your, your, your mom and daddy over there? Yeah. I said, give me that hatchet. I took his hatchet. He handed it to me freely. I said, you know how to get home from here? Yeah. I said, you go straight on home. Don't you stop. When you get there, you tell your mom and daddy that I took your hatchet away from you. And he beat a trail straight on back towards the house. I figured, well, see, he'll make it back safely, all right. He probably had no business out there at all. And I know it was his daddy's hatchet, but I just kept the hatchet. Threw it in the back of my truck. I figured, well, maybe if his parents come down there, I'll give it back to him, explain to him, explain him the situation. But I know what the little squirt did. He ran straight home and didn't tell his mama because I don't think he was supposed to be out there in them woods. Anyway, that's the story of the boy with a hatchet. I took it away from him. I carried that hatchet around in the back of my truck, my railroad truck, for 10, 15 years. I don't know what ever come of it. That's the story of the little boy. What would you do? <laughs>